Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am coming to you with a lot of recommendations for a few different things. So if you've read the title of this video, I'm assuming you came here for some queer media recommendations, and that means that I'm going to be talking about movies or TV shows that feature queer main characters, I'll also be talking about music videos that feature queer characters, and also some YouTubers that are queer that you can go out and find. Also, another exciting thing about this video is the fact that today is my birthday, and honestly, there is no video that I would rather post on this day. Before we get going, I want to say something. If you are new to my channel for any reason, I am a lesbian, so if these recommendations feature a lot more queer ladies than anything else, it's just because that's the kind of media I gravitate towards because I want to see myself reflected in things. However, for any and all of these categories, I am of course asking for recommendations. You guys have seen a lot more stuff than I probably have, so please let me know what's missing, what should I watch? And also, I want to discuss one other thing, especially in terms of the TV shows that I'm going to be recommending. It can be really, really hard to find LGBTQ plus media that isn't problematic. And if I want to see myself reflected in TV or in movies, it often means that there's a give and take. It means that some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today that I really love may have problematic elements, which I am more than willing to acknowledge and discuss. Because I know that while I can watch some of these shows because the harm doesn't affect me quite as directly, I know that that doesn't apply to everybody. I really hope that eventually I will be able to have a full list of movies and TV shows that are full of really developed LGBTQ plus characters that I just love and doesn't have any other harmful elements, but as it stands right now, these are the movies and shows and music videos and people who have really helped me to be who I am and who I think have a lot of value for certain reasons, if not others. So yeah, that's just something I wanted to get out of the way before I started talking about this, but let's jump into some recommendations. People have been requesting this video for months. Months people have been asking me to do this, so it's time. And we are going to start in by talking about some movies. So not to jump the gun or anything, but with movies, I want to start out with my favorite favorite queer movie of all time, and that is Imagine Me and You. If you are a lady who also loves ladies, then it's probably pretty likely that you've already seen or at least heard of Imagine Me and You. This movie starts with a woman named Rachel getting married, and at her wedding ceremony, she happens to notice a woman named Luce. Luce is in charge of the flowers for her wedding, and the two kind of form an instantaneous connection. After the wedding ceremony, Rachel and Luce continue to be close and eventually develop into a relationship. This movie just does a lot of things right, and it, it does a trope that I'm really not comfortable with most of the time. I don't really like when movies about ladies who love ladies are also about cheating. However, I think in this instance, in this particular movie, it is done in the best way. But seriously, this is one of my favorite love stories. I adore Rachel and loose and I could watch this movie every single day of my life and that would be totally fine if this is the only movie I ever got to watch. Second favorite movie of all time that feature ladies loving ladies has got to be But I'm a Cheerleader. This is a movie from the 1990s about a girl named Megan who has to be told that she's gay. She just kind of doesn't acknowledge it and she winds up being sent to a conversion camp, but this is not like a super angsty conversion camp movie. It's actually really funny, and it's kind of a satire on what a conversion camp is, and amidst it all, Megan falls in love with another girl at the camp. Plus, I just decided I'm probably writing a paper about it this semester, so clearly I'm a huge fan of it. Next up, have to talk about Brokeback Mountain. This is sort of the sad gay cowboy movie everyone kind of knows it's out there, but I do think that it's a really good movie. Yes, it is sad, but it's just... A piece of cinema that I find a lot of value in and that makes me cry. It's characters that I really, really love. So even though it gets that rep as the sad gay cowboy movie, I think it's a lot more than that and I think that it is a really great movie. Also have to talk about The Runaways. So this is a movie about The Runaways, which was sort of this band of girl rockers that created a lot of like future girl rockers, including Joan Jett. And the reason this is on my list is because in the movie Joan Jett, as played by Kristen Stewart, and she Carrie Curie, as played by Dakota Fanning, end up in a relationship throughout the course of the movie on and off. 
There's a lot of cool stuff going on in this movie as far as learning about the Runaways and these girls who are really young being a part of this group. Kind of a weird movie, but definitely one that I think is fabulous. So those are the movies that I have to recommend to you. I have a bunch more that I really want to see that I haven't yet. Somehow I haven't seen Moonlight yet, which I know is like a crime. It just won Best Picture. I'm absolutely sure I'm gonna love it. But those are the movies that I really recommend to you that I have seen personally. I promise I'll probably be doing an update of this video in like a year because there will be plenty more to share. So moving into TV shows. This list of TV shows is not going to include any television shows that participated in the great, like, lesbian character plague death of 2015 and 2016. There was this period of time when all of a sudden all of these shows killed off their lesbian characters, and if a show participated in that, it's not on my list. Either because I stopped watching it when that happened, or because I don't want to watch it now. So... None of those, none of those shows will be on here. The first couple that I want to talk about are shows that were super influential to me as I was coming out. And the first of those is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Willow Rosenberg is a character that is deeply, deeply important and influential to me. Here she is. My girl. My girl. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is, of course, not about Willow. It is about Buffy Summers. She's the 16-year-old girl who has a destiny, and basically she has been called to be the Slayer, the girl designated to slay vampires and other various demons. However, Willow is an incredibly central character. She's one of the other main characters in the show, and her journey coming out was one that I watched as I was coming out and as I was realizing I was gay. It has some of my favorite characters of all time that I think are fascinating and that just I connect to so deeply in so many different ways, but the show is so special to me because of its storylines about Willow and about being gay and it's just an incredible show. I highly recommend it. Another one that was essential to me that I watched as I was coming out is Legend of Korra. Now, the thing about Legend of Korra is I recommend it as having a bisexual woman of color is, is the main character. Sadly, you don't really see this until the last episode. It's really sad to acknowledge that, but, but the good news is that there are comics that are going to be coming out and they are all about Korra and her relationship and it's, I'm so excited. Legend of Korra is a spin-off series to Avatar The Last Airbender, which was a show like everybody watched when they were younger. I didn't, don't worry, I didn't watch it until I got older, so don't feel bad if you haven't seen it. But Legend of Korra is about the next Avatar and an Avatar is is like a reincarnated identity who has control over all four elements. Legend of Korra has this really cool like 1920s, 1930s vibe, but it has a lot of this really fabulous mythology. But Korra over the course of the show is, she has a relationship with a man and that's sort of the central story, but by the end there is this acknowledgement that she's bisexual and then that's going to be in the comics, so I, I have to recommend Legend of Korra. I prefer it to Avatar The Last Airbender, which I know is an unpopular opinion, but it's mostly because of Korra as a character. Next up we have a show I just barely finished, and that is American Horror Story Hotel. This show takes place in California, present day, and it is about this hotel called the Hotel Cortez. There's a lot going on in the show, but one of the main things is that later Lady Gaga plays a character called the Countess, and she is this vampire, fabulous woman who's pansexual and just... Mm. The thing is, over the course of the show, sexuality becomes something that is so fluid for almost all the characters involved, which was just really refreshing to see. But my favorite character of the show is a trans woman named Liz. Now, here's where I talk about stuff that can be more problematic. Liz is played by a cis man actor. I don't support trans characters being played by cis actors. I just want to get that out there because that's an issue with another one of the shows I'm going to mention. And I totally understand if that is a turnoff for some people. However, Liz gets one of the most central storylines throughout the show and she is just a character I completely fell in love with. The show's a little bit gross out in the first couple of episodes, but as it goes on, it becomes a show about, like, finding family and acceptance and love, which is totally strange for this show as a theme, but it's honestly might be one of my favorite shows of all time. Just this season, not the entirety of American Horror Story. There are other seasons of American Horror Story with queer characters, but I think Hotel does it the best because there are so many who all get the chance to have these really varied identities, and it's just kind of a joy to see. 
I also want to recommend Transparent. Now, this is the other one I was going to talk about that has a cis man playing a trans woman. And the show gets a lot of bad rap for it, which again, I completely understand. But it is about this family and the head of this family comes out as a trans woman at the very beginning. As the show develops onwards, it's all about Mara coming into her own identity. It becomes about how her children respond to this transition and all of their relationships with people as well. And the reason that I really love the show is because, like American Horror Story, it gives sexuality such an open air feeling. There are so many characters who get to explore sexuality, who get to identify as different things as the show goes on. They get to mess up, they get to be in relationships. It just provides such a landscape for all of these queer people to exist. Now, it's really unfortunate that the main character is a trans woman played by a cis man, and while this does not excuse it, there are lots of other trans characters who show up as the show goes on who are played by trans actors. That's kind of my give and take with Transparent. It just gives such a chance for a lot of these characters to explore sexuality and be who they are, but that those are my feelings on Transparent and why I personally really enjoy it. But if we want to talk about a main character where a trans character is played by a trans actress, I gotta recommend Sense8. With a caveat, of course. Sense8 is about these eight people who due to some event, develop a telepathic connection to one another. They are people from all around the world of various gender identities, of races, of sexualities. One of these characters is a trans woman played by a trans actress. She is really fabulous. Another one of the characters is a closeted actor from Mexico and... L Lido is- Lido's my favorite character in the show. I just adore him. My caveat with the show is that it does portray a lot of the people who are from places around the world in negatively stereotypical ways. Especially Caffius, the character who's from Nairobi. He has a particularly negatively stereotyped storyline, and that's so unfortunate in a cast of characters that's so diverse and interesting, and they're- basically they're all pansexual. That's what the creators of the show have said, but that is your warning going in. It's one of those shows that's the most open about sexuality that I've seen, but it is certainly not without flaws. So I recommend it as a great piece of sci-fi that breaks down all these issues, but it does come with that warning and that questioning of the fact that the show needs to do better with those storylines. And the last one I want to recommend is actually a web series, and that is Carmilla. The web series Carmilla is actually a retelling of the classic like, Story Carmilla by J. Sheridan Le Fanu, I believe, which was, like, the very first piece of vampire fiction. And Carmilla is about Laura. She is at her first year at university, and basically this university that they're at has a lot of weirdly supernatural things going on. Laura becomes kind of an investigative journalist of the situation. She's trying to get to the bottom of all of the weird supernatural stuff that's happening, and at the same time, she's coming to realize that there are some weird things about her roommate, Carmilla. Laura is gay, Carmilla is queer in some way, there is also a side character played by a YouTuber who is non-binary, and other various characters throughout who are queer in some way. It is really fun and it's really addictive. It's got a great love story running throughout the whole thing and I adore Carmilla. All right, time to recommend some music videos. First, a couple of people that I recommend that have a variety of music videos. Mary Lambert has some fabulous music videos with Ladies Loving Ladies. Particularly, I love She Keeps Me Warm, which is kind of like girls falling in love at a coffee shop kind of thing. It's fabulous. But also Hang Out With You, which is a super adorable song. It sort of seems like it's about the fact that Mary Lambert just wants to hang out with her dog, which, you know, I get, but hanging out with her dog all day allows her to meet this girl and they have a little love story at the end. Highly recommend Mary Lambert in general. She has fabulous music and plenty of queer content. Another person that I have recently fallen in love with in terms of music videos is Hailey Kiyoko. So I already knew Hailey Kiyoko because of Girls Like Girls video in which a girl is falling in love with her best friend, but she has a boyfriend and they still kind of fall for each other anyway, and the chorus of the song is girls like girls like boys do. It's so good, it's just, it's great. But basically any of her music videos feature relationships between women. Her most recent one, Sleepover, is about her having a sleepover with a friend and she doesn't really know how to confront the fact that in her mind she's really attracted to her friend, but she can never kind of cross that line. 
In general, Hailey Kiyoko has great ladies loving ladies content in almost all of her music videos, and I eagerly await any that she has in the future. Also want to recommend Addicted to You by Avicii. Now, this is crossing my line in terms of not recommending stuff in which the gay ladies die at the end, but it gets a pass on aesthetic alone, really. It's kind of like a retelling of Bonnie and Clyde, but they're both women, so they're just these female bank robbers. It looks so fabulous. Sadly, they do not escape the fate of Bonnie and Clyde at the end of the music video, which is your warning going in. But when I watched it originally with, uh, who is now my girlfriend, we were both kind of like, oh my god. If you want a great ending for a retelling vibe kind of music video, I have to talk about Genghis Khan by Mike Snow. Genghis Khan winds up being sort of a what if James Bond fell in love with the villain kind of thing. This song is fabulous and I listen to it constantly, but my favorite part of the music video is definitely when the James Bond stand-in is about to escape and then he turns around and starts dancing instead. So good. <laughs> I don't know how I could get through this video without mentioning Tegan and Sarah at least one time. They have this music video, Faint of Heart, which is really great. Basically, it's about this group of people who are participating in a lip syncing competition and they are all dressed up as queer icons. There's someone dressed as David Bowie, there's someone dressed as Prince, there are two people dressed up as Tegan and Sarah, and they are all performing this song, Faint of Heart, as the actual Tegan and Sarah cheer them on from the audience. Honestly, I ended up watching it because I wound up just digging through a ton of queer music videos in an evening, and I'm really glad that I found it, because it's great. There's also Trash by Tyler Glenn. I found this in much the same way, and the reason I want to talk about this one is because watching it was sort of a deeply personal experience for me. Tyler Glenn is the front man for Neon Trees, and grew up LDS, uh, as did I. And a couple of years ago, he came out as gay, and this music video has a lot of rage in it, and it's all directed at the LDS church. The music video is really angry, but it was an experience that I felt a lot of connection to as he was singing and as he was dancing around this hallway, just being angry at the way that he had been treated and at the way that other queer people in the church has been treated. Tyler Glenn has some other great music videos too, but I, I had to recommend this one because it wound up being such a personal experience for me watching it. And the last one that I have to mention that I saved to the end because it is my absolute top favorite music video of all time, like of all time, this is it. And that is What's It Gonna Be by Shura. This music video is kind of just like if John Hughes made a movie where everyone wound up being gay. It's about these two people who seem like they're best friends and because they've been told that they should be attracted to certain people, there's this bit at the beginning where she is lusting after the football guy and he is kind of all focused on the head cheerleader, and as it goes on, they kind of realize that their feelings are actually for the opposite people, and she starts to fall for the cheerleader, and he starts falling for the football guy. It's just so happy and good, and I, I love it. I love it. I'm rendered incoherent. Lastly, I want to recommend some LGBTQ plus YouTubers to go and watch. The couple of people that I started out watching first are, first of all, Hannah Hart. Hannah Hart's famous for doing My Drunk Kitchen videos, but she's also a really vocal voice within the LGBTQ plus community, and she was a voice that I listened to a lot as I was realizing I was gay. Also have to shout out Tyler Oakley, who was one of the first people I ever heard about being gay on YouTube. He doesn't do that many videos on his main channel anymore, but if you dig back through it, I mean, there's so much material for Tyler, and he's all over the internet. He's done lots of really great stuff, and I appreciate his work with The Trevor Project. I appreciate that he recognizes the ways that he's been at fault previously in his work with the LGBTQ plus community. I really have grown to love Tyler. Ash Hardell was one of the very first queer YouTubers that I ever subscribed to. Ash does a ton of really fabulous queer videos. She's constantly talking to other LGBTQ plus YouTubers doing videos. She has a series called The ABCs of LGBT, which is really educational and fabulous. She also has a book under that title, and I just really love Ash and the work she does. Plus, there's Elena Fender. I believe her channel is Miss Fender. She's bisexual, and she does a few videos about this, a few videos that are more lifestyle-based, and Elena's just great. I watch her 
her main channel, I watch her vlogs, she's a really awesome voice, and she does great videos with other queer YouTubers as well. There's also Caitlin Alexander from the channel Realistically Saying. I originally found them because they are a side character in Carmilla, but they have their own channel. They do lots of different kinds of videos, some about sexuality and gender identity, music covers, uh, the series called Ginterviews, which is great. Plus, they're in a web series I haven't watched yet, but I'm interested in called Couplish. so yeah. Definitely recommend. There's Rowan Ellis. Rowan does a lot of queer, feminist, geeky videos. I recently found her channel and have been like, <laughs> kind of going through it obsessively a little bit. She's especially a great voice to talk to right now with the issues going on with YouTube and restricted mode. She just did a video about it recently. In general, she makes the kind of fan discussion videos I want to make and she's fabulous. There's Cat Black. She's a trans woman who does a lot of just opinion videos and she does question and answer videos where she talks a lot about different kinds of identity and stuff. Fabulous. And last up, we have Miles of Miles Chronicles. Up to this point, their channel has been Amanda's Chronicles, but Miles just recently came out as non-binary. So there are a lot of older videos about Miles where they've said that they're gay and kind of talked about that, but now it's like a new path. What is Miles gonna do now? And I'm excited to see where they're gonna go with that. And their coming out video was great. There's just so much excitement in that video that it's hard to watch it and not smile. So I definitely recommend their channel as well. Okay guys, there you go. That is the end of my recommendations video. Like I said, I will probably do an update for this eventually. I have tons more to watch. Plus I'm sure I'm gonna get so many recommendations in the comments of this video. Please give me recommendations. I hope that you've enjoyed watching and you found a couple of new things to watch, things or people. And now I'm going to go and continue celebrating my birthday because that's an exciting thing. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!